Arne, Jürgen, when he arrived, said he was the normal one. How would you describe yourself? Uh, I think uh, it's not about uh, what I tell you now. It's uh, it's more special what Jürgen did to this club. So uh, when he arrived, he said uh, he was the normal one. But I think what made him special is the impression he left behind. Uh, winning trophies, uh, of course, but his playing style, I think the fans uh, loved it. So uh, maybe he said it was the normal one, but I think the fans see him differently. Uh, maybe not as a person, but but what he did for the club was more than normal. Let's put it that way. Obviously, we've seen the rivalry that has been with Manchester City and Pep Guardiola. We've seen the emergence of Arsenal. We know the threat of the likes of United potentially strengthening again, Spurs, etc. So what expectations can you have on the season at this stage? I think you said it correctly. If you work in this league, everyone gets better every season. So it's also for us important to improve. Um, and, and and one of the things is because our competitors improve as well. Um, but that's normal if you work in the biggest league of the world. You could expect other teams to become better and that's also the aim we have. And that's also the reason why we come in every day, to make the team and the players better. What, what do you do to, to ingratiate yourself, integrate yourself with the, with the club and the, and the city and the fans? I think it takes some time to understand everything, but... Um, the time I'm going to, uh, uh, the way I'm going to use my time in the upcoming weeks is, of course, to make the team in the best possible way and the players in the best possible way, to for us to to be ready for the first game. And uh, it always helps if you get to know the city. But I think as a manager, you, and everybody knows, it helps even more if you win most of your games. So uh, I think with Jurgen, it was a combination of getting to know the city, getting to know the style of play the fans like, and. Um, I don't want to uh, take words out of Richard's mouth, but I think one of the reasons why uh, why um, why he came to me was that our playing style is not so much different. So we both like the fans uh, to come into the stadium and 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 see a team that that plays with a lot of energy, that plays uh, good f good football, and um, I think that is the thing I'm focused on most and. Um, if we do that in the best possible way, that probably will give me some time as well. And if I have time, I can then get to know the city a bit better. But um, it all starts with improving the team and winning as many games as we can. Julia. Hey, Julia from BBC Radio, Merseyside. Um, last season, due to a lot of injuries with senior players, we saw a lot of the younger members of the squad being used by Jurgen, and they certainly stood up and were counted when it was needed. Are you someone that likes seeing that working with the younger members of the squad bringing them through and will they have that same opportunity this season to play? I like to see good players uh, and um, if they're old or young that doesn't matter that much but uh, it's always nice for a club and also nice for a team that young young players come through the ranks. I think that's the way to the right words to use. Um, so that is always that always gives energy in, into a club as well. So that there are not only the players that are brought in from from other clubs, but also the players from uh, from the academy. So, but in the end, it's all about the quality. And I agree with you; they did really well. So, um, if they continue doing so, there will be a fair chance that they will play as well. Getting to know the people that work here, which I've done already, of course. Getting to know the players, uh, especially as a person, but also but ma mainly as a player, uh, because I've seen a lot of games from them. I've seen a lot of tra training sessions, but I think you 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 get to know them even better if you are there with them together, and then implement playing style. But um, it's not that we're going to change everything over here because a lot of things are done really well. Uh, but we have to find ways to improve and um, I took my time for that because I was off for a lot of weeks so I had a lot of time to look where we can improve uh, but I think starting to work with them will um, will actually uh, get us a even better insight in, um, in the improvements we have to make. James, Arna, uh, James Pierce from The Athletic, just as a head coach as opposed to manager, how, how do you understand the dynamic, how it's going to work with transfers in terms of your input and influence on 
For me, it's not a change, as you might know, because in, in Europe we work like this. Um, and I've worked at Feyenoord and my former clubs like this always. I think there are not many clubs in the world. Maybe there are not even clubs in the world where there's one person that decides everything. Um, so it's a collaboration, is that the right word to use? Collaboration. Uh, between people, I don't uh, think there were many sports directors that bring players in that, uh, that the manager or the head coach doesn't like, and it's the other way around. So, um, But it's not only the two of us, I think, at a club like this. There are many more people that can bring in their opinion, and, um, and that's the way I've worked recent years, and I like to work like this, to be honest. Some people would have been put off by the prospect of trying to follow in the footsteps of such an iconic figure. Was that, was that something you had to mull over, or was that just yourself to leave if you wanted to take this on? No, not, a, not at all, actually. <laughs> I think um, um, you can look at it both ways. You can look at it, yeah, there are big shoes to fill, but you can also look at it in a way that you inherit a squad and a team that is has a winning culture. Um, and one of the reasons to come here, and there are always more reasons for this, but one of the reasons is that that I do feel we have a real good team, real good squad. And um, I think as a manager, you want to work at a club where there are good players with the opportunity to win something. And uh, the past has shown that there is a possibility for Liverpool to win some trophies. So, um, yeah, I think it's you can look at it a way to, to be the successor of someone who's really successful. But um, that's maybe... I look at it in a way that that is ideal because there is an opportunity to win something and I like to work with players, I like to develop them, but uh, I like to win as well. And there's an opportunity at this club to win. So. Okay. Hi, Anna. David from ITV. Um, I think you and Klopp had the fans singing your name for the final game. You've also spoken with him. Was, was there one piece of advice or one thing that he said to you about the club, about this role, that was stood out to you? Oh, we've spoken about many things, but I think it's not more than normal that the things we've spoken about that stay betwe stays between us. So him singing a song for me was special because uh, I don't think many uh, there are not many managers where where the fans sing for. Is that maybe not the best English to use? But um, I was fortunate enough that after a few years at final they start to sing for me. But now coming over here without even worked here yet, without winning a game, already fans singing for you. That's a good that's a good start. <laughs> Um, something to look forward to, but I think there are many more good managers in this league, which is normal because um, English people like to believe that's the best league in the world, and I, I believe this as well. <laughs> so uh, it's normal that if you work at the, at, the, at the, it's such a league that there are many good managers where you have to, uh, which you're gonna face, and Pep is one of them, that's for sure. And I've. Uh, I think it was last time when I had the interviews with Liverpool. I, I'm lucky enough that I, I've, I lived in an area where I could see the Barcelona team. It's one thing we have in common. Uh, but when he left, uh, when Pep left over there, there came a new era, and that was the rivalry between Liverpool and um, and City. So I've seen a lot of that rivalry and a lot of games um, of both teams. I'm looking forward to work here, but not specifically take playing against Man, Man City because there are many nice uh, teams we're going to face, starting with Ipswich, of course, which is at this moment the most important one. Can you tell us anything about the desire and hunger uh, you felt in these conversations for them to keep performing in Liverpool and keep winning trophies here? I think in general every top player wants to win. And um, I assume, and I'm hoping, Virgil first wants to win the Euros. <laughs> uh, maybe not everything is in one line uh, in their area. And then when he comes back after he enjoyed a, a few days of his holidays, uh, he will come back and all these players want to win. And um, they have the hunger to win. If you don't have that, you're not playing for a club like Liverpool. So, um, you had the hunger to stay in Liverpool as well? I did, yeah. Did. yeah. did you tell uh, Cody Beckwood to slow down at the Euros? No, I'll, I'm hoping he will <laughs> step up a bit even more, especially in the quarter in the semi-final. Um, the semi -final? Yeah, first quarterfinals. Yeah, hoping to see them playing the England England national team in the semi-finals. Yeah. So we are hoping and expecting him to do even better. No, uh, Cody has a very good tournament, like his last one. The World Cup was really good for him as well. Uh, he's been impressive till now, and I, I can only hope for him that he can 
can continue doing so in the upcoming games. Um, Simon Sam Stone, BBC. Um, just going back to James's point on following someone like Jurgen Klopp, do you have to think about what you're going to say to the players? Because there's something un unquantifiable about a manager who's been in charge for so long that the voice and the messaging is consistent and the demands are the same. You've got to go in and impress those players as well. Yeah, but that's a general feeling. That has nothing to do with, with, with who've worked here before. I think uh, as a manager, you go to bed at night and you, thi you think about what, you, what you're going to do and what you're going to tell the players uh, every day. That's not only uh, before your first day, that's, that's during your whole period where you work. So it's, people tend to see, look at us and, and think we're only thinking about the tactic board, uh, which we do a lot as well, but it's also about convincing players and the way to talk to them. So for me, that has nothing to do with being the successor of Jurgen. That is something that's part of the job that you think about, okay, how can I get the best out of the players? What way do I have to approach them as an individual or as a team? Um, so for me, that is, that's not something I have Jürgen in mind. What would he say? No, that's not the way I look at it, but it is, okay, I get to know the players, which is the best way to approach them and um, get the maximum and the best out of them. I've been there uh, twice, once as a, as a, as a fan uh, uh, and once uh, when they showed me not only this training facility but also the stadium. Um, one of the reasons to join Feyenoord was that I think my playing style, the way I would like my teams to play, um, it's nice if you have the fans that appreciate that style and they are they are special in the league in Holland. So everybody would tell you that the Feyenoord fans are a bit they bring more energy to the team than every other uh, uh, fans do. And this is what's been told to me about, uh, about the Liverpool fans as well, not only told to me. I think if you, if you, look a lot, if you watch a lot of football, and I've been there once myself, I, I, I also felt uh, what, it, what it means for the fans to see the team playing. So it's a win-win situation, uh, a very good team to work with, but implementing a playing style that is going to be hope, uh, similar but a bit different as well, that that will um, lead to a lot of enthusiasm by the fans. And um, if, that is the, if that's going to be a good cooperation, the two of them, then hopefully uh, it will lead to special things. I think uh, what, what has been announced already is uh, Sipke Hulsov, who I've worked with at... Um, at Feyenoord and, and, and our former club Cambuur Leeuwarden as well. So uh, he's sitting here in the room as well, like you probably saw. Uh, that's been announced already. Goalkeeping coach has been announced. Haven't worked with him, but um, we've spoken to him, the two of us, and, and um, we're really happy that he is going to join our team. Um, and we're expecting two others uh, to join uh, us. Uh, or can we? More announcements to come. Okay. <laughs> okay. In the near future. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I was just wondering when, can, when communication was first made, the contact was first made with you, what, to rewind to that time, what that emotion, what that feeling was like with the ambition that you have as a head coach to, to bring you to, to Liverpool and maybe was there a nervous excitement that everything would go to plan to bring you here? Hmm. Uh, I've worked at a real special club at Feyenoord and um, I wouldn't leave that club for many clubs but when Liverpool comes along that was obviously one of the clubs where I would leave Feyenoord for uh, since you're seeing me here but for me maybe even more important is the first time Richard came over that to hear the reasons why he wanted to take me uh, wanted to, wanted, he wanted Liverpool to, um, to bring me in mm -hmm. and um, and, 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 and since then I've noticed how professional this club is, so uh, it went quite fast afterwards. Um, but most important, I think, f especially for me at least, is that to get to know the reason why they want you. Because, um, of course, uh, we, because Sipka was involved in that as well, we were lucky enough to win a few things. But, um, but playing style, uh, if someone wants to convince me, he should talk to me about, I like your playing style. 
because otherwise I would I would have been a wrong fit for um, for this club or for any other club that doesn't like my playing style. So he he really knew a lot. He seen a lot. He, he saw a lot of games, and I think this is something you want to hear that they don't only want you because maybe you've won the league last season or won the cup this season, but it has to be more than that. And I was impressed by that. And then since then things went quite smoothly um, due to my agent as well. <laughs> There's already a real good team. Like, <clears throat> like I just said, there have been a few new signings last season, so the longer a team plays together, if there's a good manager or a good head coach, uh, normally you will see that things will improve. Um, so that's why I'm fortunate that I'm going to a club where normally not many transfers go out. So uh, I've worked at Feyenoord. Uh, it was almost normal that eight, nine, ten players left the club over every, after every season, so it's more difficult for a manager then to get this progress. But here I'm expecting him to keep the most of our players. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I think he wants it himself. And, and from there on, we can only build.